just in time. And the person who is going to deliver our presentation this evening is, oh my gosh, she's so awesome. I've been a member of the Evaluators Club, a club that she's a member of, and she's one of those quiet people that's just awesome. And you'll get a chance to hear all of her, all about her awesomeness tonight, or see her in her awesomeness tonight. Evaluations are one of the hallmarks of Toastmasters, and they are a fundamental skill to learn both inside and outside of Toastmasters world. So tonight, we're going to teach you all about how to be a great evaluator. Stephanie Hobart is a newly minted DTM, and she's been involved in Toastmasters clubs for 10 years in a variety of leadership roles. Her current clubs include Chattering Chesters and the Evaluators Club, the latter of which is an advanced club that focuses on the art of evaluations. Stephanie works in finance at Frito-Lay and enjoys traveling and visiting new states, cooking, and this was so new to me, I was reading over her bio and I see honing her barbecue judging skills. And I was like, whoa, is that for real? And it's for real, you all. Stephanie is a certified barbecue judge. What? How interesting. Okay. So she loves doing that because she is a certified barbecue judge. I'm excited to hear from her. Stephanie Hobart, good to great. How to give impactful evaluations. How From good to great, how to give impactful evaluations. Stephanie Hobart, distinguished Toastmaster, Stephanie Hobart. Thank you so much, Denise, for the kind words, and I really appreciate the introduction that you gave. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. I am going to share my screen. Can you give me a thumbs up when you can see it? Awesome. As Denise mentioned, I am going to be talking about how to give impactful evaluations. As Christy mentioned at the start of this evening, sometimes evaluations can be somewhat of a book report format. And what I wanna share with you is some tips and tricks that I've learned from the lovely evaluators club that I'm a member of, but also from my fellow Toastmasters over the years. Today's format can be broken into about four different parts getting into an evaluator's mindset, how to prepare for and listen to the speaker. I'll go into some different types of evaluation formats that you can use. And then lastly, guidance on how to deliver and give that actual evaluation itself. But before we get started into the content, I wanted to see how many of you have, you know, show of hands, how many of you have received a good evaluation or good feedback from a setting outside of Toastmasters? You remember how it made you feel? It was good feedback, maybe not necessarily even like a positive, but something is like, hey, I want to help make you better. This is how I would recommend or some advice. If you remember how that made you feel, that's what we're trying to emulate with evaluations here. So that's what I want you to think about. Keep that in the back of your mind as we're going through this session and in Toastmasters going forward. Start off, one of the first things you can do is prepare, prepare yourself and get into the evaluator's mindset. Be open, receptive, and perceptive to the speaker. Think about it this way. Here's an approach you can take. The speaker is probably going to tell me something that I don't necessarily know about. And that's kind of cool. I get to learn from a different perspective. I get to hear from someone either new to me or a new topic or new subject that I may not necessarily know about. Or maybe you do know all about it, but you're hearing someone else's voice. If you come into it with that mindset and an open process, then you will get and receive the most out of the speech, even as an evaluator. One other thing I like to remind myself is Listen to the speaker's intentions and what are they trying? What is the intent of the speech? What, listen, 
feel their emotions that are coming across as well, not only from the speaker, but also how you feel. How does the speech make you feel? What is he, she, they trying to convey? One caution I would give is to be mindful that you do not need to agree with the speaker's point of view or their opinion. There's a lot of dialogue and differing opinions, but as an evaluator, you are evaluating how they're giving their speech, how they can be more effective and how they can improve in their public speaking skills going forward. With that in mind, there are some steps that you can take prior to the evaluation to get ready for the speech. Now this I will start off with is for general evaluations that we do in the Toastmasters world, or even if you're preparing for a non-Toastmaster setting. We'll then go into, obviously this is a little bit different for contest season. First thing, you can reach out to the speaker and before their speech, their meeting time, and get the evaluation guide so you can understand what the objectives are of the speech. You can also meet with the speaker to understand his, her, their goals and what they're looking to accomplish with their speech. You can also ask them if there's anything they should look out for. What you may, may many of you may not see is below this little Zoom screen. I tend to use my hands a lot. And I generally like to ask my evaluators to look out for that when I'm speaking in person. And I have asked for that feedback in the past. It's something I'm working on and it's something I always like to call out to my evaluators. Last but not least, regardless of whether it's a Zoom meeting or an actual physical venue, note the room, what the size is, who the audience is and what is the dynamic because that's an important part of the speech as well, whether the speaker can meet the audience, understand who their audience is, and what kind of room dynamic they're working with. All this to say, contest season, you cannot prepare for in advance or ask any questions. So I realize this is slightly different, but you can at least get in the mindset and think about some of the general evaluation guidelines that you have used in the past. Now that you have the mindset and the prep work, now we'll go into how to listen to an evaluation. All this to say, this is one of the most complicated parts of an evaluation and of Toastmasters because you're trying to do too many things at once. You're trying to listen, be present and write things down. I'm going to offer two perspectives and there's no right or wrong way to do this. One member of a San Diego Toastmasters club mentioned in a blog post that he does not take notes. He prefers to practice active listening, which means being present and fully focused on the speaker. He did say that he does take notes of key points that the speaker lists in the opening. Today, I'm going to talk about X, Y, Z, and he uses those as reference, but otherwise he completely focuses on the speaker and listens to that person. For me, I like to listen to the opening and absorb what the speaker is saying. What is that person going to tell me about? I will take some notes on order, sequencing, general structure. I also like to note transitions and pauses and stream of thought. I usually write a free few keywords, which may or may not be complete sentences, they may or may not be written <laughs> totally fully, but those are how I take my notes. But again, I like to be looking at the speaker and listening as well. Afterwards, I will structure my evaluation based on one of the methods that I will share with you later in this presentation. I would like to say I use a kind of Texas expression here at the end of the day, Remember, clear eyes, open minds, can't lose. Come in with that mindset for an evaluation and I think you'll be on a good starting path. Once you have listened to an evaluation, you now need to provide that feedback. Rather than a meander through some of your feedback notes, it is helpful to have an organized format. Some of you may have heard of a 
compliment sandwich. And this is where you start off with a positive comment, then provide some feedback and room for improvement on the speaker and then end on a positive note. This is a good format, but if you wanna take your evaluations from good to great, you can use some different formats and give even more detail and more constructive feedback for the speaker. Feedback is a gift and better evaluations are a benefit for all involved. The next few slides will take you through some of those formats. This is not an exhaustive list nor a prescriptive list, but it's five examples that you could leverage and use in either contest season or in your own clubs or even in your personal and professional life. We'll go through the three, two, one method, the pie evaluation, codes, gifts, and saw, heard, and felt. First up is the three, two, one evaluation. This is three things that the speaker did well. Usually those are pretty easy to identify what resonated with you. Next up, two things that the speaker can improve upon and make sure that they are things that the speaker can actually control or take action on. For example, me, if I use my hands too much, Stephanie, stop waving your hands around. Try to avoid focusing on something that may be out of the speaker's control. And I'll give some more guidance on how to approach some of those pieces of feedback that you may or may not want to address. And then last but not least, end the evaluation on a positive note, sharing one thing that the speaker really excelled at, what you loved, what you took away from, the, from their speech. Next, we have the PI evaluation. This stands for praise, improvement, and something exceptional. If you notice, there's kind of a format and a trend with some of these evaluation methods. Praise, start off with what did the speaker do well? Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be three. You don't have to follow a certain number. Say you found five things, say you found two things. Just note what you really liked about that speaker's presentation and what information they shared with you. Next, what areas can the speaker improve upon? And this can be any number of items, but remember to keep it something constructive and in a respectful and polite manner. And then lastly, what did you like about the speech and what do you think the speaker did exceptionally well? We all have that X factor in how we present and it's your gift and your ability to be able to find that and share that with the other person, make them feel like a good person at the end of the day. The third evaluation method is called codes. And I tend to use this one a lot more so because I just like the structure and it gives, allows for more detailed feedback. Content, was the purpose of the speech clear? Did you understand what the speaker was trying to accomplish? Organization, how was the speech organized and did it lend itself to the speaker's goals? Was there a beginning, middle and end? Were there appropriate transitions? The delivery. This focuses on how was the speaker sitting in camera, using hands, were they standing? Were they walking around? Note vocal variety, use of language, choice of words. And again, you know, how are they even interacting on a Zoom screen? Because that's an important, we've all been learning this method over the past two years and how you engage with an audience either in person or via Zoom is equally important. The E is for effectiveness. Was the speech effective and did it achieve the goals of this, both the speaker and the evaluation form? This can be a little bit subjective, but did it resonate with you? Did you feel emotion? Did you get the point at the end of the day or did it come back around to, an organized format, that's one of the ways you can think about effectiveness. And one of the key components too is to summarize your evaluations. A lot of times we may focus on giving feedback, making sure we fit in the compliment sandwich, positives and both areas of improvement. 
but it's very nice to bring that all together, wrap it up with a bow and summarize, this is what I thought you did great. Remember to focus on this for future and you're really amazing at this. Keep it up, good job. Even if it's short and sweet, summarizing can really bring home a strong evaluation. The next evaluation method is GIFs. And this is one I have not used, but I'm challenging myself in my next evaluation, perhaps at the evaluators club meeting or at another format to use this type. The G is for good. What did the speaker do well? The I is for improvement. What can the speaker work on and focus on for the next speech? The F is feedback. Provide a stretch goal and how can that person grow and develop as a speaker and give them something to strive for in future speeches? The T is for takeaway. What, did, what was the message? What did you walk away from that speech? You won't remember everything, but what is one thing that maybe resonated with you or you thought was a strong message and it was great to bring across? As with codes, summarize at the end and bring it all together for both yourself, the speaker, and for the audience to understand. Last but not least, we have saw, heard, and felt. First thing is, what did you see? Again, note, posture, body language, hand gestures, movement. You can notice engagement with the audience as well. What did you hear? Note use of vocal variety, choice of words. How was the speech structured? Were there pauses and transitions? Did you have any emotion? And lastly, how did you feel about that speech? What energy was the speaker giving across and bringing to the speech? And then what were you receiving? And even depending upon if you read into crowd energy and crowd vibes, you can, some people do that more than others. I tend to notice the energy of a room, how people are feeling. Sometimes you can feel if something's tense. Has anyone been sitting in, well, before a pandemic, we were all sitting in a movie theater and you know it's a scary moment and everyone feels scared. You're like, oh. That's kind of an energy that maybe you want to notice and perceive in when your speaker is giving his or her their speech. Those are five evaluation methods. I realize that's a lot of information at once. Again, this is not a comprehensive or an exhaustive list, but you can use some of these to really take your evaluations to the next level and also give this person you are evaluating that next level of feedback. Taking all of these evaluations into consideration, what's next? Now you have to deliver the evaluation. And I got some interesting information from the Toastmasters International Effective Evaluation Resource. And there's a lot on this page, but I'm going to walk through everything with you. These are some good learning tips for myself and hopefully for the rest of you. First one, speak for yourself. Avoid using generalizations like, well, the audience feels or they generally feel. You are the evaluator. This is your perspective and your opinion, your evaluation. You're evaluating the speaker's speaking abilities. Be yourself. The next one is to avoid using impersonal statements as one must. Sounds very formal, very regal. Again, be you, be very relatable, be approachable. One piece of advice that I got from a professor in school is we would all like to try and use big words. And he would tell us, he said, Speak to me as if you were speaking to your mother. How would you explain this? Make it relatable, make it approachable. There's no need to use big fancy words. If, of course, vocabulary, we all have a word of the day, we love to throw it in there, 
But at the end of the day, you want to make sure that everyone can understand and you are bringing everyone along with you in the message you're trying to convey in your evaluation. The third point is to avoid judgment words and phrases such as good leaders must do this, or you all absolutely need to do that. Kind of goes with the first point about broad generalizations. This is your viewpoint, your feedback which leads us into the next point. This is the perfect time to use I statements. I was impressed when you did X, Y, Z, or I really appreciated hearing you share details about this type of evaluation format. This is the time to break out those I statements, make it about how you saw her, felt what you perceived. And it's really about your perspective, you are one person, but giving that feedback to the speaker. The next one is a good one, is once you've made a point, don't repeat it. Don't beat that point into the, you know, into oblivion, you've made it once, move on. That's why some of these format structures are great because you can say, ah, I'm gonna talk about three things they did well. Done with that piece. Now I'll focus on two points that they can work on an improvement. And then the last one, one thing they really excel at and to bring it all together that helps you to avoid repetition and also think about how you can be very clear and concise with your evaluations. The last one I thought was also interesting is avoid very strong words like you should always do this. You always need to remember to do that. I will caution, I may have already or may use some of those words in this speech. Also, feedback is a gift. Feel free to give me any evaluation after this presentation, but avoid some of those words because those are sort of absolutes. And we're all human beings, we're all learning. It's a wonderful process to be able to get feedback and to grow and develop as a public speaker. So let that person know that, hey, you do this in the future, you can try alternative forms of X, Y, and Z in your speech. Now for actual delivery of the speech, when you're standing up there or standing here in this Zoom little camera, give your opinion and a friendly, non-threatening and sincere manner. It goes without saying, but sometimes it may come across as really harsh or really strong. Make sure that you're being genuine and you know, open and sincere about what you're trying to convey. And that's where an evaluation comes across the best, especially an evaluation from the heart. Avoid actions that call more attention to yourself other than to give feedback. This is not the time to be at a slam poetry session. This is where you are, the point is for you to convey the feedback. And also the speaker was the person who had the effort, the time to put together a speech. And you wanna make sure that that message comes across clearly to them rather than focusing on what you may be doing. I always like to, and anyone who knows who's been to one of our club meetings or a meeting where I have evaluated, I tend to start off my evaluation with the method that I'm using. This may be right, wrong, or indifferent, but it's just a best practice I like to use to bring others along with me when I say, oh, I'm gonna use the codes method. Many people don't know what the codes method is, except for all of you individuals who have either known that or just learned that tonight. So I usually like to start off with a very brief summary. Code stands for content organization delivery effectiveness, and then I'll summarize at the end. 30 seconds or less, and then everyone knows, right, cool, five things she's gonna talk about in her evaluation. It also helps with the structure as well. It's a mini speech, if you will, in your own evaluation. And then last but not least, you want to leave on a positive note 
you want to leave the speaker motivated. They, you want them, that person to come back and say, yes, I am so excited, love the feedback. I'm learning and growing as a person and as a speaker, and I want to come back and I'm ready to go to give my next speech. This is a great group of individuals that I'm working with and I love giving speeches to them. That's the vibe you want to give off. If that's not what comes across, then it's not a beneficial speaking environment for either you or for the speaker. Remember, always end, that's why we say, end on a positive note and leave that speaker feeling empowered and motivated to give speeches in the future. I would also say this applies in real life as well, real life in your personal life as well. Think about how many times you may have a conversation with someone in your family or someone in your friend and you want to give feedback. If you want to implement that and see it reflect back towards you, you want to leave that person empowered and positive and saying, yes, I receive your feedback. I appreciate it. I'm going to work on it. I say this works in both your professional settings, your personal settings and Toastmasters speeches as well. Where does that leave us? I hope you've gained some useful tips for your evaluations that can be used in the upcoming contest season for your Toastmasters meetings and feedback in your everyday personal and professional life. At the end of the day, the best evaluation will be genuine. It comes from you, be you, and be sincere. So remember, be kind in your speeches and be yourself. And thank you everyone for your time during this presentation. I'll now open it up for any questions or any thoughts you may have about evaluations. Well, I know Toastmasters is not usually known for its silence. I want to start off here and just say, great job, Stephanie. You've covered many different ways. And I think it, it gives people a set of tools for their tool chest because not every situation is the same. I know Manhal Shukar, past district director, used to give some tips and I don't have the, that literature right here at my fingertips, but it mirrors a lot of this. And that if you have a speech where somebody is more, either newer, I think, or more of an emotional thing, then definitely use the, what I saw, what I heard, is it, and what I felt. Because then you can relate to that emotion. I felt just empowered by your message or whatever it might be. You can be much more encouraging. And that it also can work, I think, when you have that icebreaker where it's hard to say, well, you did these three things just fine, but you know, it wasn't like, wow, you knocked it out of the park, but you want to be encouraging. So you can do more with that. Does that sound right? Or am I mixing and matching? Cause I didn't pull those notes out of my file. No, that's absolutely what you want to, to convey in an evaluation. And I, I appreciate the, what, what I would encourage everyone to do is strive to be, give that better evaluation. Cause as she mentioned, Christy, sometimes it's just a, you did fine, that was great. But how do you really help push that speaker to the next level to become a better speaker in personal and professional life? So yes, absolutely. Well, and especially specific examples. You know, I heard you do this you can make that even more powerful by approaching it this way. And I think people then get the, the idea. Mm -hmm. We have a question in the chat from Barbara Murray. As a speaker, how do you approach an evaluator who attempts to rewrite your speech? Great question. Now, I know our format, Toastmasters format, does not, it's not a debate style, if you will. There is no rebuttal 
to the evaluation. But what you can do is if I had that situation to myself, I would wait until, you know, thank you very much for the evaluation. And then if you are able to speak with that evaluation, with that evaluator after the meeting, or perhaps if you're at the, after the contest or where you are and just understand, I'd love to understand your viewpoint and tell me more about your evaluation. Very, again, come at it with an open mindset and see where that person's perspective is coming from. Now, I have not been in that situation, so I don't know if it was something stronger or if it was a more intense conversation that came across. And I can realize that can be a little off-putting if you've spent all of this time preparing a speech, writing it, drafting, creating it, only to have someone rewrite it for you in the evaluation, that can be hard. And that may not be the intent of, that shouldn't be the intent of the evaluation. The intent of the evaluation is to, how can you help to deliver your message and convey your thoughts in the best manner that you as a speaker possibly can? Did I answer the question? It's a challenging one, it's a good question. We have a question from Yvonne Broach with a raised hand. The, the methods that you gave seem thoughtful, the codes, the gifts, and so forth. And of course, we're all familiar with sandwich and pie and three, two, one. What about people who are, it seems like they're in a competition during their evaluations to come up with their own cute way, A, B, C. W I N E. And in order to have something that fits that letter, they're they have to struggle sometimes. Mm -hmm. Do you see that in other Toastmasters clubs? Because we certainly love to do evaluations just as much as we like doing speeches, it seems. That's a great question, Yvonne. I have not seen that any other format. And I will say, again, this is one perspective from the evaluators club, what I have learned from my fellow evaluators. You can't, if there's a format, like I said, there's not a prescriptive, this is not, you must select one of the five and use it. If there's a new format, I would say, as long as you explain it to everyone and say, here's how I'm structuring my speech. I would say that's, you know, go for it, but I also defer to what contest rules and guidelines. And I don't know if some of our esteemed District 50 leaders have any additional comments with regards to that. I would love to have a comment because I think that technique is what got me in this job. If I can explain. <laughs> I was in a evaluation contest six years ago, I believe. And because the nature, I don't even remember what it was, but the nature of the evaluation made me think of some acronyms that were decent. I made some up that were kind of, you know, wobbly too. But if it was about snow, let's say, then I used SNOW and just came up with something that was sort of like gloves and codes and all that, but I came up with it. Well, the judges must have liked it well enough, or I delivered it well enough, that to my amazement, I won the division contest. So then I was on the district stage and then I ended up being asked to be an area director. So ooh, it goes from there. So I think it depends on the judges is my opinion. If you can deliver it and make sense of it, why I used it was because it was memorable. If the speech was about snow, then you could do different things with those letters and, but it has to make sense. You know, I've done it for a, a club here not too long ago and I had a real hard time figuring out what one of those letters was. So it was not the perfect solution, but just one perception. And maybe yeah, some of you were judges and you went, oh, not that again. No, that's a great perspective. And thank you so much for sharing that, Christy. I, I definitely, you know, for people who may not be as creative or thinking through, you know, maybe 
Scrabble is not their favorite game and putting together all the letters and thinking what could it come across as. These more general formats can be helpful, something to draw from, and you can put it in your toolbox and then elaborate, ad lib, and go from there. Was that helpful, Yvonne? Yes. Thank you. We have Ken Miller with a raised hand. Hello, Stephanie. I do have a question. Do you have a certain way of structuring your notes? So when you go back in your delivery of the evaluation, you can actually organize or read how you, uh, you know, regarding the key points that you wanted to communicate. Do you have a certain way or structure that you use to help you with that? Yes, I do, and I'm happy to share it. I will also say that there is no right or wrong way to do that. And what works best for you may not work as well for other people. I generally have a piece of paper and what I do is I write down some keywords or phrases, talk about opening, what was the opening thought, you know, oh, transition, or I note use of ums, ahs, I would say I kind of literally how I write my notes, it's in this, I have a big piece of paper and I literally write in a small square and I kind of write words on the side, like there are transitions. It's usually just words, it's not complete sentences. I do try and go in order of how the speaker presented the content so that at least I know in order, oh, they talked about this in the beginning. Oh, here is their structure. I'm also trying to engage in active listening and give the speaker eye contact my attention. But again, I've also worked on the art of writing whilst not looking at my writing. Sometimes my handwriting goes off to the side, which is why the big piece of paper is great. And I write so small in the middle to help with drifting off to the side. That is just me. Again, one of the other Toastmasters from the San Diego club said that he doesn't take any notes. And that's great too, if that's your, if you are a person who does not like to listen and write at the same time, or that's distracting for you, that also works. So uh, that's my method, Ken. Hopefully if there's something you can pull from that and use for yourself, uh, hopefully that helps. We have a question in the chat from Mary Bell Harris. When I, am when I am an evaluator, I always worry that I won't have any meaningful feedback to give. Any thoughts? That's a good question, Maribel. And everyone's feedback is valid. I say that and you deliver it in a respectful and sincere manner. You can say, to, to me, use the I statement, to me, I had a question about this, or to me, I really good feedback, if it's positive feedback, say if you don't know, I don't know how to give this person any constructive feedback to improve themselves, well, good feedback is good too. I really liked how you pretended to be a dragon, or, you know, did in your tall tales, or use your hands. That's good feedback too, because you're helping the speaker to reinforce what they're doing well, and they can continue to build on that skill set. I've been told that sometimes my jokes are funny when Toastmaster speeches. So I keep telling jokes in my speeches, see if it resonates with people. That's, I've heard that feedback before. So all of it is provided you deliver it in a friendly, non-threatening, sincere manner, all feedback is valid. And if you come at it from a point of genuine interest and curiosity. Now, again, I, um, I'm sure there are all different kinds of situations where it may not have come across as well, or you may not know how to deliver a hard message. I like to believe that most people who are in Toastmasters are here to help themselves and help others become better speakers. And so that feedback, anything that you, you know, even a positive feedback is good feedback. Was that helpful, Maribel? 
It was, yeah. Thanks, Stephanie. I think um, being an evaluator is one of the hardest roles in the whole Toastmaster world, to me oh, yes. anyway. Oh, yes. Agreed. Agreed. That's why we have some methods, some ways to think about it, and hopefully just some things to remember the next time you want to either evaluate someone in Toastmasters or even do you have to do it in your professional workplace as well? We do have a link in the chat for an evaluation for tonight's session. Please, please, please complete that evaluation. That will allow us to provide additional information to Stephanie, as well as what we can do to help improve these sessions going further. Do we have any more questions for tonight? We still have time. We have a raised hand from Ken Weimer. Take it away, Ken. Dean's fellow Toastmasters, sorry I was late, but I've been following with great interest. Stephanie, a question I had is particularly related to our club that many times the general evaluator will take what an evaluator gave as far as the speech is concerned and will either say the same thing again or because the general evaluator is introduced before us or as an evaluator, that many times the general evaluator will make comments about the speech that you're about to evaluate. So how do you deal with that? Yeah, that's a great question, Ken. And actually I will answer it. And I know this is something that Christy had mentioned talking about it to very, very beginning of our session before I even started. So great question. The way my home club, both of my home clubs, both Chattering Trusters and the evaluators, we talk about, we give guidance to the general evaluator about evaluating the structure of the meeting and not so much the evaluations themselves or the speech themselves. You talk about, did we have a, the right number of people? Was there were all the roles filled? How did the theme flow? That's the guidance we give. And I will say this in chattering trusters, we're all on Zoom and we use a PowerPoint and we just have like, this is what the general evaluator does on the screen. And we have the general evaluator when they share what they do in the meeting. So that kind of reinforces what they're going to talk about and not necessarily talk about. All that to say, I know Christy has mentioned it would be a great idea to have some general evaluator training as well. So I will pause and let Christy comment on that if she would like to. Well, and I would like to get the conversation started, but I don't have all the answers. I ask you all to chime in because I think there's some do's and don'ts. Just like Stephanie said, the general evaluator should talk about the entire meeting. You have people who stepped up as an evaluator talk about how they did. Were they positive? Did they come across with some constructive comments? The general evaluator, in my understanding, should never give direct feedback about the speaker because he has a team of evaluators that do that. Only if it's egregious, like, oh, I really loved how you did X, and I didn't quite hear that in the evaluation, then just kind of sneak that in. But otherwise, let the evaluator talk about the speaker, and then you talk about how the, gen the evaluator spoke. If you can and there's time, give those table topics people some feedback. That might be the only thing they got to say in the meeting, and they don't really know that you've noticed that they dropped their ahs and ums, or something's changed, you know, it's, it's a better representation. Any tips? How do we help our clubs have even better general evaluations? Has anybody has got a club that's figured that out? Stephanie's PowerPoint's a good idea. And that was just out of, I guess, 
necessity during the start of the pandemic and stay at home rather than giving a printed handout to everyone, just put it up on the share screen so that person could read their role. And I did also put in there some guidelines to understand Christy and Ken, your comment about sometimes it can sound like a book report, just repeating what other people had said. And sometimes it can go on for a very long time. So we actually, we put in there a time guidance of two to three minutes just to give the general evaluator something to stick to rather than, this is not a five to seven minute speech, doesn't need to be. So that's what we do in our club. That's not necessarily the Toastmasters International guidance, but it's just something that we use as best practice. Yeah, no, I think it is best practice because it, to me, it's two to three minutes, but it's not in force. It's not like the evaluator, you disqualify if you go mm -hmm. past three minutes and 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. The general evaluator can go longer when there's time and necessary. And sometimes with a newer club, it's helpful because that's how they learn what really worked and what is still a little bit needing improvement. But it also should be encouraging, just like the evaluation should be encouraging. You know, not like, oh, we, we started 30 seconds late, demerit right there. No, <laughs> I don't think so. But I, I do think general evaluations, when you hear it from a new person, it's often less than than what you would love a guest to hear, right? That it didn't give you anything about improvements. And I don't know if a cheat sheet would help. No one would look at it or like the PowerPoint is the way to go. We have a raised hand from Patricia Kim. I don't really have a question, but I comment. I've always had difficulty giving evaluations. And I've always admired people who have followed the three, two, one. That's the most common that I've heard. So I really appreciate your giving all these tips on how to do evaluations because it's gonna help me personally because I've always struggled with evaluations. So thank you, Stephanie. Are oh, you welcome, for Patricia? Your, for your, your input too, Christy. But it, it was a great session. I thank you. Well, and I think people in the workplace learn skills through evaluations that would help them. If you're a supervisor and you do performance evaluations, for example, that maybe you perfected that, but maybe you just check the boxes and you definitely want to give people that positive reinforcement. Don't leave them thinking, you work so hard, but it's not right. You want to leave them with the, you work so hard and I can see you growing. I can see that you've made progress. Here's some things you did really well, but try this. And I think you can take it even a further notch up. So they, they do, just like Stephanie said, they leave encouraged, ready to try the next time. Yeah, good tips, very timely, great job, Stephanie, Naomi, Denise, and picking this topic, because this is one of this contest uh, uh, sets that we have evaluation and international speech. So please pass along the tips to your contestants, because those are going to be the things that the, will help the judges feel like this is a, a meaningful evaluation and impactful evaluation and be the winning one. We did receive one additional question in the chat from Barbara Murray. Is there a way to limit the time a general evaluator speaks if they are too lengthy in speaking? In speaking? Is there a way to limit the time the general evaluator speak? Is that the, the question? Yes, ma'am. I would say that's up to the Toastmaster and how he, she, they manages the presentation. I know that Christy's doing and Naomi, I have a red background. It's almost like the digital version of the stage hook, get the person off the stage. Now I will say I have not mastered the art of playing Oscars music. 
when they're speaking, you know, that nice gesture of swelling music, orchestra music. And then now, you know, it's your cue to move on. It's called the mute button. <laughs> that too, but I, I know that sometimes I like to jump in or even you can also in a Zoom world, in a in-person world, I'm not sure how this works, but in a Zoom world, sometimes you could put in the chat one minute to wrap up and then everyone can see the message and you know that everyone saw it and hopefully the general evaluator has seen it as well. Sometimes I wonder if they don't see the timer. I mean, I've had a situation where they went on and on and on and I thought, it's been read for so long, maybe they aren't pinning or have their screen to do that. So then I follow, just like I followed Naomi's lead there and put the red background up, they got the hint that <laughs> another person did it. Or maybe they just ran out of steam. I think it has to be a, an expectation of the club. We don't wanna hear from any one person for a very long time. Unless you're the speaker, you get five to seven minutes continuous time. No one else should ever be speaking that long. Not the presiding officer, not the general evaluator. I will also say it is easier in the Chattering Chester's Club. We meet from 12 to 1 p.m. during our lunch hour. And so we know pretty much everyone has a meeting at 1 p.m. So if we're giving the general evaluator at the end of the meeting, they know they're limited with the amount of time. I know that can be harder for clubs that say meet in the evening or on weekends where it, you know, maybe your club meeting starts at seven, sometimes it runs till eight, sometimes it runs till 8.30. I realize that can be a little more challenging. I'd, I'd like to also, Naomi, Stephanie, Manny, Denise, put in a plug for the Evaluators Club. I know when Denise started, she pointed out that some of us are members of that advanced club. The Evaluators takes evaluation to a next level, that you have a speaker and an evaluator for that, and then an evaluator of the evaluator. So if you really want to polish up your evaluation skills going into the evaluation contest, stop by the evaluators meets is it second thursday am i saying that right denise second thursday seven ish seven fifteen whatever the exact right time is and we've been doing hybrid meetings so it's it's a good way to practice your skills and i highly recommend that anybody who wants to be an evaluator visit another club give an evaluation of somebody you haven't heard 59 times because you've been club members forever and you get a new perspective. You get an opportunity to do and experience something that maybe you didn't have before. Thank you. Take it away, Denise. All I can just say is awesome job. Thank you so much, Stephanie. I learned something. I thought, surely there can't be anything else that I could learn, but I did. And we so appreciate everything that you provided for us tonight. Thank you. And with that, our next leadership learning session is next Thursday, the 24th. There's still time for you to register. I think there's going to be a pre-work assignment if you have registered, you should be getting that probably over the next day or so. We'll be excited for, help me, Naomi, what's the name of the session next week? It is called Emotional Intelligence and You. Your Emotional Intelligence. I'm excited. I will be leading that session next week. And I'll be looking for all of you next Thursday. Thank you everyone for attending our session tonight. Thank you, Stephanie, for such dynamic information. As you've seen in the chat, Stephanie says she will share this slide deck with everyone. So I will be sending her everyone's email so that she can do that. As Denise shared, please sign up for next Thursday session. It is going to be great 
and it is what leaders need. The evaluation for tonight's session is in the chat, but I will send that on email as well to those who were having a problem making that connection. I know sometimes Google is just a little bit finicky, but it's working. Once again, thank you. Stay warm and have a wonderful weekend. Try to make some of those contests. We need the support. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you all so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Great job. This was an excellent session. Yeah, it was very good. Thank you.